Hi, this is Brittany from Hand to Mind. This is our fifth grade teach at home math video series. This is week three, day two. So I was wondering, when in the world would you ever need to know how to compare decimals? And then it dawned on me, have you ever been to a track meet or have you ever been timed with your running? Did you know that there are times when there is a, a track meet when people are running that they have to compare the times all the way down to the thousandth of a second? Because sometimes people are so close when they go across that finish line. So come join me today as we talk about how to compare decimals all the way to the thousandths. So today, when comparing decimals, we're gonna look at something that is might occur in a science classroom. And so this is another reason, not just because we, we, we do races, but also because in science, we weigh a lot of things. And when we weigh things, we want to be as precise as possible, especially in an experiment. So going all the way to the thousands with our weights can be very helpful to make us as precise as possible. So let's listen to this story about Lena and what she's doing in science class right now. You can follow along or read along with me. Lena is weighing rocks for a science experiment. The weights are 48 thousandths of a kilogram and 28 thousandths of a kilogram. Which rock weighs more? So she put these on the scale and these are the measurements she got. And so what is she, what is Lena, what is Lena trying to figure out? She's trying to figure out which rock weighs more. She wants to know which rock weighs more. So rock weighs more. That's what she's trying to figure out. And what information do we know? We know that one of the rocks is 48 thousandths of a kilogram. And we know another rock is 28 thousandths of a kilogram. So to figure out which one weighs more, we're going to go and we're gonna model it first. And so we're gonna use our base 10 blocks. So if you have these at home, you can use them with us. Or if you don't, you can join us using the Braining Camp app today. Okay, um, we are going to use this app and I'm going to switch it to comparing because we are gonna be working on comparing. The other thing that we have to make sure and do as well is we have to make sure we understand what our blocks are representing today. So we're going to cross these names out because they're not gonna be representing hundreds um, or thousands, hundreds, tens, and ones. This time, the green block is going to be representing our ones. So this is a whole. And the flat is going to be our tenths. So those are gonna be our tenths. And the rod is going to be our hundredths. Hundredths. And our unit is going to be our thousandths. Gonna be our thousandths. Almost there. There we go. Okay. So if I go back to my information, I know that one rock was 48 thousandths of a kilogram, and the other rock was 28 thousandths of a kilogram. So let's represent them and then let's compare and make a decision of what that looks like. Okay, so for the 48 hundredths, are there any tenths? Nope, I don't see any tenths, but I do see some hundredths. How many hundredths do I need? Did you say four? So I'm gonna bring over four of these. These are my hundredths because it takes a hundred of these to make that green cube over there. Okay, and then how many thousandths do I need? Did you say I needed eight? Yep, I need eight thousandths. So here we go. Almost six, seven, eight. Okay, so now we have our eight thousandths. 
So now I've represented one of the rock's weights as 48 thousandths. Now we're gonna re represent the rock that has 28 thousandths. So again, are there any tenths? No, nope. but there are some hundredths. How many? There's two of those. So there we go, put that there. And how many thousandths are there? There's eight of those again. Oh, those have the same thing. Okay, interesting. Okay, so bring those down. There we go. Almost. There we go. Okay, so now I have 28 thousandths to represent the next one. So our job is to figure out which one weighs more. So can you tell the person next to you, when you compare numbers, do you start with the greatest place value or the least place value? Did you say the greatest place value? If that's the case, then we're gonna start with the four hundredths and we're gonna compare it to the two hundredths. Well, what do you know about four hundredths and two hundredths? You know that four is more than two, so four hundredths is more than two hundredths. So it doesn't matter how many of these thousands there are, those don't matter in this case. So right there, I know that 48 thousandths is greater than 28 thousandths. So we just answered our question. So let's come back to this story about Lena. We just figured this out. We know that now that 48 thousandths is greater than 28 thousandths. And we figured that out using the blocks. But if you notice down here, we have another model that we can use when comparing numbers and that is a number line. Number lines are very handy when you don't have the blocks to represent it. It's just a nice way to be able to see and think about where are numbers in on the number line. So looking at this number line, you're going to notice that it starts at two hundredths and it goes to five hundredths. So I want you to tell the person next to you, why does it start at two hundredths and go to five hundredths? Why would I make a number line that does that? Take a moment to think about that. Did you notice that two hundredths can also be thought of as 20 thousandths? And did you notice that five hundredths can also be thought of as 50 thousandths? And look at our numbers. Does 28 thousandths come between 20 thousandths and 50 thousandths? It sure does. Does 48 thousandths come between 20 thousandths and 50 thousandths? It sure does. That is why I made my little end caps on my, my number line. So I don't wanna to have to draw a number line from zero to wherever. I can actually draw a number line with numbers that I want. So when I want to place my number, if this is 20 thousandths, then this is 21 thousandths, 22 thousandths, 23 thousandths, 24 thousandths, 25 thousandths, 26 thousandths, 27 thousandths, 28 thousandths. So now we know that right here is where 28 thousandths is. And if I keep going on to look for 48 thousandths, I know that it has a four in the hundredths place, so it has to be somewhere between here and here. So I could count again, 41 thousandths, 42 thousandths, 43 thousandths, 44 thousandths, 45 thousandths, 46 thousandths, 47 thousandths, 40, eight thousandths and that one goes right here. So looking at my number line, if this number comes before this number, then I know that this number has to be greater than this number. 
So my number line's a very helpful tool. Well, let's practice this. So here are two numbers using decimals to the thousands, and let's see if we can practice this comparing. We've already, somebody's already done, drawn us a number line, so I wonder if that number line can help you. So we have one and 134 thousandths, and one and 125 thousandths. Hmm, so this is an interesting one. Okay, so they boxed one and one tenth to one and 15 hundredths. Hmm, wonder why they did that. Wonder why they did that. Well, one and one tenth is the same thing as one and one hundred thousandths. Does one hundred thirty-four thousandths come between that? Sure does. And one and fifteen hundredths is the same as one and fifteen one hundred fifty thousandths. And one hundred twenty-five comes. So we have what where everything comes between. It also helps you with these. So it's telling you one of the numbers comes there and one of the numbers goes there. So I want you to look and which number do you think comes right here first? And which one do you think comes second? Did you say the number that comes right here is the one and 125 thousandths? Why would that be true? What do you notice? That this number has the 12 hundredths, but it has the extra 5 thousandths. So this was 120 thousandths to 130 thousandths, and 125 thousandths would come right in the middle of it. Sure. Okay, what about a hundred? So then, so then this number would be 1 and 134 thousandths. Notice there's that 13 hundredths or 130 thousandths. So you have to go four more to get to 134 thousandths, which is what we did. So which number is, so one in 134 thousandths is based on this number line. Since it comes over here and we read for left to right, should be greater than one in 125 thousandths. Okay, now I'm just gonna give you one and now you get to choose. Do you wanna draw a model? Do you wanna just think and reason about it? And, and it's your choice. So is 895 thousandths greater, less, or equal to 990 thousandths? How many of you said that it was less than? 895 thousandths is less than 990 thousandths. Why is that? Could I prove that? Could you tell me why that is true? Why don't you tell the person next to you why you think it's true? Well, I think I could prove it using a number line. I think I could prove it using a number line. So looking at these numbers, I notice something. I'm gonna start my number line at 89 hundredths or 890 thousandths. And I'm gonna have my number line go to one, one hole. Because I'm at 990 thousandths, so 10 more is gonna get me to that one hole. So I'm just gonna to go to one hole. So where would 895 thousandths go? Well, if this is, eight, if this is 890 thousandths or 89 hundredths, this is one, 891 thousandths, 892 thousandths, 893 thousandths, 894 thousandths, 895 thousandths, right there. And if this is one, and I could start here at 99 hundredths, then that is really, 
it, which is the same thing as 990 thousandths. I can tell right here that 895 thousandths is less than 990 thousandths. So I can prove that answer. I could have also looked in the place values and started with the greatest place value, which was the tenths. And right there, I can see that nine tenths is greater than eight tenths. It still will make 895 thousandths less than. So as you compare numbers, you can model it different ways. You have to remember those place values to be able to compare those numbers. If you'd like to practice this skill more, please visit handtomind.com where you can find some more skills uh, practice on these ideas. I hope you have a great rest of the day.